Once we're through with this video, you'll remember everything you need to know about Nyseria for exams. Let's begin. In our scene over here, the band was singing their famous Knife Cereal song. Knife Cereal, of course, reminds us of Nyseria. Knife Cereal for Nyseria. Now, there were two people in this band, and they're actually brothers. One's name starts with an M, perhaps for Michael? I don't know. Let's say his name is Meningococcus. All right, so here we have Meningococcus. And the other brother's name starts with a G, perhaps for George? Let's say it's Gonococci. And don't worry, we'll discuss Gonococci's girlfriend on the bed, as well as his baby. So we recall the conjoined Nyseria monster who broke into the concert to smash down the knife cereal box. You see, these guys, these monsters, were bothered that the band was singing about knife cereal. They were jealous of the attention that these guys were getting. And to make matters worse, the song sounded just like them. Remember, Knife Cereal and Knife Cereal. So they broke in and smashed down the Knife Cereal box and then cowardly flew away. So let's take a look at the monsters. They're red as they're gram-negative. Nyseria, both types, are gram-negative, and that's why they stain red in gram-staining due to the thin peptidoglycan wall. And they're conjoined twins over here because Nyseria exists as diplococci. So if you see gram-negative diplococci, you want to think about Nyseria. Now let's move over to the knife cereal box that the Nyseria monsters cut down. We take a look at it and we notice a few things. We see that there are these knives around it, of course, because this is knife cereal. And some of these knives represent the pili of Nyseria. That's why some of them have different colors to represent the high rate of antigenic variation of Nyseria pili. We're going to see, for example, that the pili on the capsular surface of Nyseria meningitidis are responsible for the attachment and colonization of the nasopharyngeal epithelium. And it's because of the high rates of antigenic variation that vaccines have generally been unsuccessful at targeting these pili. And therefore, such vaccines have had limited effectiveness. And we'll talk more about the vaccines against Nyseria later on. Now we also notice coming out of the knife box cereal is that there is this knife with the A on it which reminds us of the IgA protease which we also saw in this strep pneumonia video. And that's because Nyseria also produces an IgA protease. The IgA protease cleaves IgA at the hinge region impairing its function at mucosal surfaces which allows the bacteria to better adhere to mucosal surfaces. Finally, in terms of virulence factors, we notice this lollipop over here that's actually olive colored. This olive lollipop or this lollipop olive, which reminds us of the lipooligo or the lipooligosaccharides of Nyseria, which has strong endotoxin activity. These lipooligosaccharides are part of the outer membrane of Nyseria with an ability to create a strong pro-inflammatory response. It's actually these lipooligosaccharides which are most responsible for the severity of meningococcal meningitis. The pro-inflammatory response results in a rapid onset sepsis and shock and can lead to death. Now the truth is, Nyseria has another virulence factor which is specific to meningococcus, Nyseria meningitidis, and that's its capsule. But since it's specific to meningitidis and not gonococcus, only our singer over here on the right of the screen is wearing a helmet. In our scenes, these helmets or caps represent capsules as meningitidis is encapsulated. But we'll talk about this in the specific video on Nyseria meningitidis coming up soon. Now we're almost done with this shared characteristic scene. Who was watching the two brothers sing over here? Well, the truth is there was no audience. Maybe they were so high that they didn't realize they didn't have an audience. The only person watching was the mayor. The mayor reminds us of Thayer Martin, the Thayer Martin Agar, which shows up lots on exams. The Thayer Martin Agar is a selective chocolate heat-blooded agar which contains four antibiotics, and we'll explain why. And the mayor was standing in the not VIP section. I guess it is not the VIP section over here. Not VIP reminds us of the four antibiotics used in the Thayer Martin agar. N for nystatin, T for trimethoprim, V for vancomycin, and P for polymyxin, also known as colistin. These four antibiotics are used because they affect pathogens besides Neisseria. Vancomycin kills gram-positive organisms, nystatin kills fungi, colistin and trimethoprim kill gram-negative species other than Nyseria, and that's why we use these four antibiotics. Because what will remain after we apply these antibiotics? The only thing that will remain, we hope, is Nyseria. And that's why it's used to identify Nyseria. Now, two more points before we end this video over here. One is that Nyseria is technically a catalase and oxidase positive organism 
we could have put a cat and an ox in the backstage over here to remind us of this fact, but the truth is this doesn't really show up in exams and it's not so clinically relevant either. And the other thing we want to mention is that patients who have a terminal complement deficiency of C5 to C9 have an increased risk of Neisseria infection, and that's because these individuals have an inability to generate the membrane attack complex required to clear the bacteria. All right, so that's it for the shared characteristic scene of Neisseria, and now we're going to talk about individually Neisseria meningitidis and Neisseria gonococcus. Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about specifically Neisseria meningitidis. So we move over to this guy over here on the side of the screen. He is M. We thought maybe it was for Michael, but we concluded that for our purposes, it's better to just call him meningitis because this side of the scene represents characteristics of Neisseria meningitis. Now he had a cap or this helmet to represent the polysaccharide capsule of Neisseria. The polysaccharide capsule of Neisseria meningitis impairs phagocytosis. And of course, since it has a polysaccharide capsule, there's an increased risk of Neisseria meningitis infection in patients who don't have a spleen, since the spleen works to remove encapsulated pathogens. Now we spoke about the pili of Neisseria meningitis. Well, both Neisseria species have pili, but those on the surface of the meningitis capsule are responsible for attachment and colonization of the nasopharyngeal epithelium. And in fact, the bacteria is transmitted via respiratory droplets and direct contact of bodily fluids. And you may have noticed that out of this brain model over here, there are droplets coming out of the model's nose to remind us of transmission of Neisseria meningitidis that it's via respiratory droplets. He also has this brain over here on the floor of the stage, which he likes to light on fire as an aesthetic appeal. But for our purposes, this brain on fire reminds us of meningitis. Of course, Neisseria meningitidis causes meningitis. Neisseria and strep pneumoniae are the most common causes of bacterial meningitis. And of course, meningitis presents with a triad of high fever, stiff neck, and altered consciousness. And if not promptly treated, it can progress to organ failure and even death. If meningitis is suspected, of course, we have to get urgent blood cultures, empiric antibiotics, and a lumbar puncture for analysis. All right, but let's talk about more conditions. We take a look at this water house over here. I guess meningitis likes to use this water house to water the plants in the back of the scene. But anyway, this water house reminds us of water house for Dirksen syndrome, associated with Neisseria meningitidis. And this is the adrenal hemorrhage caused by Neisseria meningitidis, seen in disseminated infection or in shock. And that's why we have this shock on the water house. And now before we get the treatment, I want to mention one more thing. And I was going to make a mnemonic for maltose acid detection as Neisseria meningitidis versus gonococci has maltose acid detection, but I just thought that the M of meningitidis will remind us of the M of maltose, maltose acid detection. All right, now let's talk about treatment. So at the end of the scene, there was some agent or something that was trying to shoot the monsters. Not sure if you caught that. But anyway, they shot this pencil over here, which reminds us of penicillin, which is first-line agent for the treatment of active... Neisseria meningitis disinfection without meningitis. When there is meningitis, we give ceftriaxone, and that's why there were these three axes over here being thrown towards the monsters. Three axes for triax ceftriaxone, which is first line for bacterial meningitis. Now, there was this rifle over here in the amp of the band, rifle and amp for rifampin, and this is given to close contacts of patients infected with Neisseria meningitis who have bacterial meningitis. We need to give this promptly to close contacts, preferably within 24 hours. And the truth is there are other medications that we can give, such as ciprofloxacin or ceftriaxone, but since ciprofloxacin can't be given to kids, generally, and ceftriaxone intramuscular can be painful, we go with rifampin, which is a great alternative. Now before we end this scene, let's just mention a word about the vaccine. So the meningococcal vaccine comes in different forms. Forms. It's the capsular form, the polysaccharide capsular antigen form, which has become part of routine vaccination. It's the newer, recombinant form, which is given to patients at high risk, such as those with asplenia. And as we'll see, gonococci, since it doesn't have the capsular antigen, is much harder to vaccinate against. All right, so that's it for Neisseria meningitis. Next, we'll talk about Neisseria gonorrhea. All right, so this is our last explanation on Neisseria, where we're going to talk about Neisseria gonorrhea. So we have our guy over here playing the guitar. I'll just give it away now, that when I think of this guitar, I think of the guitar strings. Some people call them the violin strings, associated with Fitzhugh Curtis syndrome. And this is when there's a chronic pelvic inflammatory disease. We'll talk about this in a moment. First, let's note a few things. Of course, our gonorrhea guy over here is not wearing a helmet, and that's because Neisseria gonorrhea is not encapsulated and that's why it's harder to vaccinate against. Now, gonorrhea over here brought his girlfriend to the concert. I don't know why she's sitting on the stage, and I don't know why she's sitting on a bed with this female reproductive model that is a perial discharge, but it works out really well for our purposes. First of all, the bed reminds us 
that Neisseria gonorrhea is sexually transmitted via genital secretions during sexual contact. That's why condoms really protect well against Neisseria gonorrhea infection. And patients who get it, Neisseria gonorrhea infection, present with a purulent discharge and can develop urethritis or cervicitis. And again, when there's chronic infection, specifically chronic pelvic inflammatory disease, it can lead to these adhesions that are very specific and they look like strings. And that's why we have the guitar over here, the guitar strings. This Fitzhugh Curtis could either be asymptomatic or the woman could present with right upper quadrant pain. Now, before we get to the baby, we note that on the bed, it says a tad. It hurts a tad. I guess she has a little bit of pain. But tad reminds us of the triad of Neisseria gonorrhea infection tenocytivitis, arthralgias, and dermatitis, specifically painless pustules on the extremities, as you can see in the picture. So that's what TAD reminds us of, this triad. But now let's take a look at the baby. Gonorrhea is not only transmitted through sexual contact, it can also be transmitted perinatally. And what we're most concerned about is blindness in the kid, and that's why it's part of routine pediatric care that once the baby's born, we apply erythromycin cream or tetracycline cream. This protects against Neisseria gonorrhea conjunctivitis, which could blind the baby. And in terms of treatment, ceftriaxone is first line for gonococcal infections, and that's why we have the triax over here. But over here, there are these random letters, A or D, to remind us of azithromycin or doxycycline, which are given to protect against chlamydia, since patients affected with Nicaea gonorrhea are also often affected, are also often infected with chlamydia. Now, if I were to do this scene again, I would have put a scepter in gonococcyze knee over here to remind us of septic arthritis, which is another condition caused by Nicaea gonorrhea. All right, that's it for this series on Nicaea. I really hope you enjoyed. Take care.